students, welcome to Columbia College for another uh, academic freedom uh, event. Uh, my name is Ayman Jahadi. First off, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dania and Students for Justice in Palestine. Uh, Eva, Brett, and Dania are actually graduating uh, this May. And so let's thank them for organizing this event. Over 2,200 Palestinians were killed during the 50-day onslaught of the Gaza Strip. Uh, hundreds of them were children. There were 11,000 people that were wounded, that were over 20,000 homes destroyed, and 500,000 people displaced. Uh, these numbers are very hard to quantify. This, of course, is in addition to the two previous attacks on the Gaza Strip in the last few years, and the blockade, which has prevented basic necessities like food and medicine from coming into uh, the Gaza Strip, which has killed an additional thousands of people. So these numbers are uh, uh, very difficult, um, and the, the media and politicians really never tell you uh, about these numbers, they never tell you about the reality uh, the situation on the ground that there is a blockade and the Palestinians have been trying to lift that blockade for years now uh, but have been unsuccessful. The blockade of course as many of you know is illegal under international law and so they don't tell you about the occupation, uh, they don't tell you about the siege which is criminal uh, and the fact that the Palestinian people barely receive water and that water is often contaminated. These are things that we take for granted here um, because we live in comfort, but one can only imagine not having the basic necessities like water, like electricity, like food, like a, uh, uh, a pregnant woman who doesn't uh, have, who has complications and doesn't have the resources uh, to fix those complications. These are the things that the Palestinian people deal with on a daily basis. They don't tell you about the destruction of property, and they don't tell you about the destruction of farms. Uh, they also don't tell you about the refugee situation. And we know that the Gazans are the refugees of the land called Israel today, from which they were ethnically cleansed. So, you know, again, these numbers are, are very difficult to quantify, but, um, you know, this summer, uh, especially this summer, these numbers reached a lot of people, a lot of Palestinians who are in the diaspora. One of my students, Ahmed, who's sitting right here today, called me and told me that he lost six of his, of his relatives. Um, another friend called and said that she lost eight. Another called and said that he lost six. Even non-political organizations that provide medicine to Palestinians that have nothing to do with uh, politics or Hamas or anything of that nature, uh, were bombed. An example of that would be uh, the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. And one of the directors is actually sitting here tonight. And so this is what the Palestinian people were facing this summer, and this is what they had to deal with both in Palestine and abroad. As you know, the, the Palestinian situation on the ground affects each and every Palestinian whether they are in the Middle East or whether they are in Gaza, whether they are in uh, uh, the rest of Palestine. It affects Palestinians here in uh, Chicago as well. Um, you know, and, and I can see it on the faces of people uh, this summer. I can see it on the faces of my friends. I can see it on the faces of my students. Uh, and I can see it uh, on the faces of family members. And it was, uh, you know, we, we had a really uh, awesome victory here this spring with uh, uh, the cancellation of the class and then the reinstatement of it, following only uh, uh, the fact that thousands of people signed our petition, uh, an AAUP finding that was uh, in our favor, um, and uh, people at the college, uh, administrators coming out and saying that the, the college cut uh, this class and was not only violating my academic freedom but was discriminatory as well. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago I went to uh, eat 
at a restaurant owned by a friend of mine who happens to be from the Gaza Strip. He's an immigrant here to the United States. He's been here for about uh, 10 years or so. Um, and he also lost a sister, and he uh, lost a nephew as well. And uh, we were discussing the situation, and we talked about the cancellation of my class last fall, and he said something really interesting to me. He said that, uh, you know, you academics and, and, and student activists, um, and this is coming from someone from the Gaza Strip, someone who's experienced uh, what life is like under occupation. He said that uh, uh, you academics and activists doing what you guys are doing on college campuses is just as important and effective as Palestinian resistance on the ground. And uh, you know what, he's absolutely right. Uh, you know, from what we've seen the last few years as far as uh, activism on Palestine and getting the, uh, the reality of the situation uh, to the general public, they've never, they've never had an opportunity to, to, to hear it. They're hearing it today, and we, we see SJPs all over the country. Uh, we see them uh, at many universities, and many of these SJPs are very capable, and they're bringing the right people to campus, and they're doing the right things. Uh, so much so that uh, the Palestinian uh, voice uh, is being heard now more than ever. Uh, you see professors uh, coming out and criticizing Israel's racist and criminal policies, because they are. There is no balance to the situation. Their policies are racist, they are criminal, and they are apartheid, and, and you can't balance a situation like that. And I wouldn't be um, up here, I'd be lying if I told you, if I tried to balance the situation. This is the bottom line as far as Israel's policies are concerned towards the Palestinian people. And so uh, whether you're a, an academic, a professor, a teacher, uh, whether you're in an SJP, uh, this is the reality of the situation on the ground, and it cannot be balanced, and it cannot be uh, argued. There's something very nasty that is happening in Palestine, um, and there's been something very nasty happening in Palestine for decades right now. Now, although we have alternative sources of news, as you guys know, and I think that uh, many of us were very frustrated watching the corporate news uh, this summer from what you see and the way that things have been presented it's ridiculous it's very insulting it's very insulting to the to the people who who uh, have lost their lives to the hundreds of kids uh, to the thousands of, of men uh, and women who lost their lives and to the people who are basically starving there right now um, and so we see that uh, we don't get the reality of the situation um, and you know from what happened this summer what the politicians are saying blaming the victim. But, uh, you know, those in academia have actually helped push the Palestinian voice forward, and there have been successes uh, despite uh, the resistance. These are individuals that are uh, examples of that success and have been able to uh, um, go contrary to the norm, and I think that's uh, what you need to do uh, in order to uh, uh, turn this situation around. And so we have tens of thousands of new supporters and a growing movement that seeks to boycott, that seeks to divest, and that seeks to sanction Israel until it conforms to international law. And uh, this movement, as you know, is, is growing. And because of the fact that it's growing, that it's growing, and because of the fact that it is very capable, um, you see that there has been a pushback. There has been an attack on professors as well as students and student organizations. There's been a disregard for this idea and concept of academic freedom. Now here's a quote by the late scholar Edward Said. A lot of you, or I hope most of you, are familiar with uh, Edward Said. He says that the question of Palestine is the last taboo in American life because the American public has been not only deprived of the relevant information by its own government and media, but because they have sought to bring the truth to life, have been silenced in the course of seeking to reframe the Israel-Palestine conflict with respect to international law. So while there have been uh, some no notable cases that you may be familiar with, there are dozens of others the last few years, and so uh, Professor Salida's case is, is one example of a case that uh, uh, most of us at this point and, and um, a lot of the country has, has heard about, but there have been others that we haven't heard about. In fact, there have been dozens of others. There have been dozens of, of professors that have been sanctioned, dozens of students, SJPs, 
classes canceled and things of that nature. And so the most recent is SJP Loyola. We know that uh, um, they were protesting a birthright event. And for some of you that don't know what birthright is, it's a, uh, it's a funded program that allows any Jew to go to Israel um, with the objective of having them possibly live there, serving in the military, and so forth. And Palestinian students that day held up uh, the names of the villages their families were ethnically cleansed from. They were suspended for this. So the irony here is that the uh, Palestinian students were simply highlighting their own right to return, a right that is theirs because of their eternal link to the country, and a right that you could go find in a resolution called 194. It's actually a law um, at the United Nations. So the Palestinians have a right of return. Palestinians have a birthright. They have a right to return to their homes. And so in my case, I had my class canceled because according to the college, the students said I was biased for showing an Academy Award nominated film called Five Broken Cameras. I was never, the student was never identified to me. I don't know if the person even exists. But in any case, at my uh, meeting with my chair, balance was asked of me and my class was later uh, canceled. But we got it back with uh, the support of uh, people uh, from around the country. And so in, in, in furthering this, the issue itself is not just about academic freedom, it's actually also about racism in the way that the Palestinian people um, have been portrayed, uh, in which, which is not even covered by political correctness. There is a, uh, um, a specific objective that you see in the media, that you see amongst uh, some academics, that presents Palestinians in a way that extracts their humanity from them, that makes them no longer human. If they're not human anymore, what you can do is you can turn them into anything that you want to turn them into. And this has been an attempt uh, uh, by many uh, in America, and the attempt for, for the most part, although it's beginning to shift and it's beginning to change, has been relatively uh, successful. An example of that is that you see uh, a few years ago there was a philosophy professor uh, at Roosevelt University who was fired for allowing students to discuss Palestine and the Palestine issue. His name was Professor Giles. I believe this was uh, sometime around 2006. His uh, chair uh, reprimanded him and it was quoted as saying that how dare you allow people to, to discuss Palestine and give Palestinians a voice. Uh, she was quoted as saying that Palestinians don't have a side, they are uncivilized, and that they are animals. She's still at Roosevelt. No. She's still there. She, she left. Retired. She retired? Yeah. She retired. Excellent. So she got a pension and everything now. Okay, well thank you. So, so she, was, she, was she reprimanded for that in any way? She suffered. She suffered? Yeah. Okay, did she get fired? Not enough. Not enough then. So her boss at the time was Louise Love, and, uh, who, who actually protected this chair, saying that she was defending her position passionately. That by calling Palestinians animals and by uh, making them into uh, uh, extracting their humanity, that, uh, that uh, she was simply defending her position uh, passionately. And so Louise Love would later become provost at Columbia College. And in fact, she was one of the people that refused to reinstate my class. These are the people that should be fired and permanently fired. Not retired with a pension, but permanently fired for their racism. And not a professor who passionately tweets during the height of Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people. Now, I can say with certainty that all these people and institutions who support the oppression of human beings who support the oppression of Palestinians by muzzling professors and students are on the wrong side of history. There were uh, uh, people that once supported Jim Crow. There were people uh, at one point who supported uh, apartheid, specifically apartheid South Africa. And so in closing, as a, an appointed member of the uh, uh, Illinois AAUP Committee on Academic Freedom, and as a scholar on Palestine, and as an activist, I call on the University of Illinois to be on the right side of history and reinstate Professor Salida to his position. Thank you.